بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا حي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن شريك الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وقتام النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا عباد الله قال الله تبارك وتعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين أمنوا أطوف الله حق تقاته ولم تموتنا إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين أمنوا أطوف الله وقولك لمسجدا يسل لكم أملكم ويحفظكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فضاق وضام عظيمة أما بعد We seek refuge with Allah and it's the Adam We seek perfect uh, We seek protection and refuge with Allah from Shaitan the Ar-Rajim the enemy of all humanity we begin with the best man now. When I mean by the best man now, we begin utilizing the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. True indeed, all thanks and praise belong to him. We seek his aid, we pray for his forgiveness, and we have what the Muslims call to walk with him, total codependency, and relies upon Allah, him, and him alone. And we don't only seek refuge with Allah from our enemy, the Shaitan, but we see refuge with the law from the evil appetites and cravings of our own souls. Whoever Allah has guided to the banner of Tawheed, of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad al-Rasulullah, no one can misguide that person from the Mustaqim, and that's the straight up path. Whoever Allah has called through his divine decree for their hearts to be hardened from accepting the Hidayah of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, no one can guide that person aright. As the verbiage of the Muslims is, only Allah through the Tawfiqi can make Muslims. We give living testimony, believers. When I say living testimony, we want, we want to internalize that we don't want to talk to talk, but we walk to walk. We give living testimony that there's nothing worthy of worship Accept Allah with no sharikala, no partners or, or associates in his divine rule and legislation. And we bear witness that Al Mustafa, Nabi Muhammad, Ibn Abdullah, Ibn Abdul Muttalib, we say the prophetic tradition, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the abbot of Allah, the slave of Allah, the messenger of Allah, and he's what we call the Qatab al Nabiyin. He's the seal of all the prophets, the best that ever was and the best that ever will be. May the prayers and peace be upon him for eternity. Allah reminds us believers, Ya ayyuhaladina ebbinu otopallaha haqai tukati O ye who say you believe, O ye who have took this testimony of faith, this kalima, have taught to Allah, fear Allah, have a sacred regard for your creator, and do not let that malik as mort the angels of death are put your deathbed through submission to him. Not just talking it, but through walking, through submission to him. Allah further goes on and, and reminds the believer. Yeah, you have a enemy do on top Allah, I will call it said Oh, you believe. Once again, fear Allah and always speak the truth. Always speak the truth. And our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam said that a Muslim can be a coward, but a Muslim cannot be a liar. 
Allah says, always speak the truth. He will guide you to do good deeds. And whoever obey Allah and his Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi has achieved the supreme success. This is where our success lies, Ya Ibn Allah. In our obedience to Allah and his Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Mustafa Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best kalam or the best speech that the human being can utter is Qatar Allah. And the best of guidance is his guidance, which we call Sunnah. And the most evil of affairs, or the worst of affairs, are the innovative matters. All innovation is a misguidance, all misguidance is going astray, and all going astray is the Lala Tinfinar. All going astray is in the hellfire. And we seek refuge with Allah to pray for what for being captives and inmates in the truth, suggesting the hellfire, the jahannam for now. May Allah protect us from it. Allahumma, I mean. Ya Ibn Allah, we are thankful to Allah, Al Jami, the gatherer that has gathered us on this day of Yamu Jumu'ah, the day when he created our forefather Abu Adam and our mother Hawa in a state of excellence. To the, the day that they disobeyed Allah and was cast down to this dunya, and also the day when they made istighfar with Tawbah to Allah, and also the day the day of judgment. We are thankful to be assembled here. We are thankful that Allah has guided us and got our hearts to strive to be of our Tawheed. The people of Tawheed, the people that are striving to sing only Allah out in worship. And we live in a society that's plagued by a great epidemic. That's plagued by a great sickness. And I'm not talking about the COVID. I'm not talking about the monkey pox. I'm talking about shirk. And Shaitan's major goal is to, is to have the human being to commit shirk with Allah. Because he understands that Allah forgives all sins. But this is one sin if the human being doesn't ask for forgiveness and make true repentance, they would not be forgiven for. And this is shirk. Now, Muslims, we're familiar with this. Very familiar with this. So we say, you know what? I'm guarding my eyes to avoid the whole shirt. But Shaitan uses a vice. He's very deceptive. When he doesn't come through the front door, he comes through the back door. So the topic of the day is football of beware of the back door of Big Dad. Big Dad, the back door of the shirt. That is the back door of the shirt. Why do we think the Prophet saw was selling in the book of the Hot said the worst of all the fans? First they come to mind, the worst of fans, sure. Because eventually, innovation leads to serve. And this is the back door that the Shaitan comes to. So the human being can eventually commit shirk with Allah. We will be very, very careful of this, Ya Ibn Allah. Now what's going through our minds? How do we define shirk? Or how, do, how do we define bidah? This word is used very, very loosely. And majority of the time when we hear it used very loosely, it comes from people that have a little bit of knowledge. Well, he's acting bidah. He's mutahi. We, we use this word so loosely, just calling people innovators, taking them off them in hodge, and we don't know nothing of what we're saying. So how do we define bidah? Innovation. It's a few definitions. But one definition that sticks to me is what Sheikh with Islam Ibn Tabiyyah Rahim Abdul Allah said. He said, innovation is when the human being or the Muslim, the believer, does anything to strive to get near to Allah, closest to Allah, and worship Allah in ways that has not been prescribed in the sacred law. It wasn't the sacred law, the Sharia. Quran was sunnah. Another definition is when the human being ascribes something to Islam or commits something in the name of Islam and they have no dalil wa huja, they have no proof or evidence of why you're doing what you're doing. The 
this is adding something on. And why do we need to add something on? A Jew came to the came to Umar ibn al Khattab al Farouk radiallahu anhu when he was in Medina. And the Jew told him, There's an ayat in your book that if we would if we would reveal that ayat, it would have been an Eid for us. And the Jew quoted the ayat. So if I ayat three. And Umar ibn al Khattab said, I remember the exact day that this ayah was revealed and where it was revealed at. On Jumu'ah, on Friday, and the Prophet saw himself on Mount Arafat. And this ayah was this day. This day. I have completed my favor upon you. I have completed, I have completed your deen. Completed my favor. I have chosen you. And made Islam as your religion. I have perfected your deen, completed my favor, and chosen Islam as your deen. So what does this tell us, Jay Better Law? If something is perfect, what needs to be added to it? If something is picture perfect, what needs to be taken away from it? Allah has perfected this deen for us. Allah has completed the favor and chosen us. We are individuals all the time. Really, really amongst non Muslims, they say, How you doing today? They say, I'm blessed and highly favored. You ain't got Quran and Sunnah, how you highly favored? How you blessed? You ain't got Quran and Sunnah. Allah has perfected this thing, chosen you and I, and completed this faith for us. So when something is perfected, it, has, it needs no addition. It needs no alteration. So what do we do? When one commits innovation, they are indirectly saying, this great man, our great leader, our great Nabi, our great Rasul, Solomon over seven, he failed and carried out his mission. Because what he bought, it wasn't that complete, so I need to add something on to it. Or I need to take something away from it. Take a little step forward. Or the lawgiver, the law that he gave was incomplete. So indirectly, we're negating that I got that this deed was perfected. Now, I don't want to get a little shaken up. Like I said, we use this word very loosely. Because somebody disagrees with somebody on the on the fit map, matter what we call a speculative issue, Bani, a speculative issue. Oh, you call this Matthias, my father is Matthias, I believe we go this way, this way, this way, this way. That has nothing to do with innovation. These are these are these are picky issues. But many times, because we have limited knowledge, we'll say somebody is a hispy. He's an Abu Bender, because he don't agree with my Matthias. Or he don't agree with my shit. That has nothing to do with it. We're talking about definitive things. And what's definitive in Islam? Call it Allah, call it Rasul. So Allah was sent them. And for many, Ishmael, Ishmael was Sahaba, radiallahu anhu. And the consistency of the Sahaba. All of the Sahaba. Not just three, not just five. All of them, collectively. That is deen. And if we add anything on to that, then that's an innovation. Now, also, everyone that does an innovation, many people don't understand this. Everyone that does an innovation does not mean they are innovative. Because guess what? I guarantee you, well, we don't bet, but I'm willing to bet. We don't bet for stuff. Well, every one of us have committed an innovation. Everyone. And we've committed an innovation out of jogging, ignorance. Does the law judge human beings for what they don't know? No. So somebody that does innovation does not make them an innovator. What makes one an innovator? What makes one an innovator is once somebody brings them the dalil, the proof. Quran wa sunnah. Some definitive. And they say, you know what? I understand this, but I'm still going with what my shit said. Hmm? Or what my imam said. And I'm still going to practice it this way. That is an innovator. Just be very, very careful. Yeah, you better law. Because this deen has no 
imperfections. No imperfections. A little whiff of this was about to creep in amongst the Sahaba during the time of the Prophet saw something. It was three Sahabas. They came to the wives of the Prophet saw something. And they wanted to know about his ibadah, the way he worshipped. Many times we want to know we really want to know a man and their real character, you go to the wives. So they went to some of the wives of the prophet, so they quieted about his ibadah. And they told him, and they felt shortchanged. They said, I ibadah is not good enough. So one of them said, and we're familiar with this idea, one of them said, you know what? I am going to fast and never break my fast. I'm trying to get close to Allah. <laughs> One of them said, I'm going to make salat all night and don't go to sleep. And one of them said, you know what? I'm going to be so pious, I'm going to never marry and stay chaste. When the prophet saw him heard about this, he came to him and he said, I fast and I eat. I make him a I pray at night and I go to sleep and I marry women. The last thing he said is that he who ever rejects my son is not of me. And many of the scholars of Allah son say, when the prophet of Allah say it's not of me, or it's not part of my umad, that means you can be outside the fold of the sand. Be very, very careful. And what's this telling us? What's the opposite of bidah? Sunnah, the opposite of sunnah is bidah. That was during the time of the salad, they had two groups. Of course, they had, you know, the Mushrikun and, you know, the Tafirun. Two groups of Muslim Muslims. I just sit there for I just been there. We must be very, very careful that we hold firmly, firmly onto the two things that the Prophet said that we never go to the island. What did he say? The Quran and my sinna that needs no addition or no system. Subtrahi, <laughs> رب العيلة دين وصلاة وسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعليه وسامي أجمعين. علي ابن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه said one that supports the innovator invokes the curse of Allah, the angels, and all of humanity. Sufyan Athari, he once stated that Iblis Shaitan loves Bidam more than a sin. Iblis Shaitan loves innovation more than a major sin. They said, why? He said, because the sinner is a great possibility they can make it step out, they can ask for Allah's forgiveness. They can come back and draw back and repent to Allah and turn away from the sin. But the innovator, he will always, the majority of the time, think he's correct in his innovation. So he'll be piled upon sin, upon sin, upon sin, and think he's doing a good thing. After the Ibn Umar, Raja Law and said, every innovation is corrupt and evil, even though people see good in it. Good in it. That's the essence of innovation. It comes from my desires. I feel that this will be good and be good for the Dawah shit. I feel like this will be good and attract more the other dust to the basket. I feel more good if we add this to the curriculum when it goes to the Quran wa Sunnah. And when we say Sunnah, it's not only what the Prophet Sallallahu did, but also what he didn't do. Once again, not only what the prophet did, but what he didn't do. And sometimes masks like that come, and there's a very, very clear hadith. When the prophet saw what some said, the haram is clear, and the halal is clear. We know the rest. 
Stay away from the doubtful matters. Him and, yeah, him and Wayne Mount Jaldi, he said, Shaitan comes through two angles. Shahawat desires and Shahubat doubt. Desires is the foundation. Now, what's the origin? How does it lead the shirt? From the time of Adam, alayhi salat wa sallam, to the time of Noah, alayhi salat wa sallam, there were people who thought he, there were solid he, righteous people. But going up to the time of Noah, the solid he, they passed. And those that were the students of the solid he, they used to gather at an area. And a thought from Shaitan said, you know what? To remember Allah better, let's build some images of them. We're not going to worship them. We just want to build some images of them so we can get closer to so we can remember a lot better. Because we're not as high as they were. You see how the innovation starts? And we're speaking to And then after they left, they're descended. The Shaitan comes back. Because the descendants used to see them with the images. Shaitan said, well, what they was really doing, because they were not like the Salihin that you never met. They were really praying to them these images so that so their dua can be accepted by Allah. They die, back door, front door shut. That's why the Prophet said every khutbah, even in the Nikah, khutbah, he says what? Every innovation is a misguidance. Every misguidance is going astray. Every going astray is the hellfire. We see imams. Because he's never been saying over and over, blase, blase. It's like a good kid all the time. But it's serious. It's serious. Even the Kupa the Nikah, the Prophet Sallallahu said this. Because innovation will destroy your marriage. Innovation will destroy our relationship with Allah. And if our relationship with Allah is destroyed, your marriage is already destroyed. Your relationship with your children is already destroyed. Your relationship with everything in creation is destroyed. If your relationship with Allah is destroyed. But be very, very mindful of this, Muslims. Very, very mindful. <clears throat> now, when they come to Bidah, Imam Shatibi, Rahim of Allah, he says that Bidah comes in two different ways so we get more clarity. We don't want nobody walking out of here and calling people Alu Bidah and all these things like that and being so scared or whatever they do. One bidah, which is an absolute bidah, is called bidah haqqiyah. Bidah haqqiyah. This is absolute bidah. This is, this is an innovation that has no dalil, no proof, no hujah, no evidence whatsoever. Well, after we get up, we make prayer, we all hold it, hold, um, hold hands and sing like the people next door. No. No dalil, no nothing. And but the majority of Muslims, they don't follow this type of bid'ah. They follow this second type of bid'ah, which is called bid'ah at idafia. Bid'ah idafia. Now this bid'ah, it has the dalil, it has the evidence, but the way it's understood and practiced makes it an innovation. That's the key. It's the evidence in the imam. The hujah, so how does somebody understand it and practice it different? <clears throat> Example, Dikr Allah. Dikr Allah. That's a form of ibadah, Dikr. Allah says in the Quran, remember Allah, Dikr Allah. The Prophet saw what Sallam told how to make Dikr. And the Sahaba did Dikr. Nothing wrong. They're going to dial in the Quran. Allah says, remember, remember Allah. And your heart will find the Salih, your heart will find. So this one law is good. But if I come up and say, I'm going to get you, Shred, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you and you, and we're going to mention Allah's name a thousand times when we get closer to Allah. It's not haram because Allah says they call Allah. Did the prophet saw something do it? No. So you say you know how to get close to Allah more than the prophet? Now stop with Allah. Let's be very, very careful. Very, very careful on these things. Also, we must be very, very careful 
when we take something that's speculative and try to make it definitive. Sister coming to the match here, sister, whoa, can't come in like that. It's mandatory for you to wear niqab. It's mandatory in Islam for you to wear black, and it's mandatory in Islam for you to wear niqab. That's a big dad. That's a big dad. Because you make it something that's speculative, definitive. And that's a speculative issue. It's mandatory, brother. You gotta wear a kufi. You gotta wear a gold. It's mandatory in this land. That's the innovation itself. As a matter of fact, that's big, that's a different innovation. That's the first innovation. Big because it has no presence in this land. That's on a whole other level. Now, also, Al-Fatiha, Allah gave many attributes to Al-Fatiha. It's a shifa, it's a cure. It's a seven all repeated verses. Al-Fatiha, beautiful. It's a root, yeah, Al-Fatiha. Now, we should recite Al-Fatiha. But after the Salat, we all say Al-Fatiha together in congregation, that's an innovation. <laughs> that's an innovation. Is it good? Does it sound good? Yes, it sounds good. Is it pleasing to Allah? No, because he did not legislate it, and his Rasul saw himself did not legislate it. Just be very, very careful of this. Yeah, you better law. Very, very careful. Do I? Do I? Many of us did it. Early days in Islam. I remember years ago, I became Muslim, and right before I made Salah, I used to stand up like this, make my do. Make, make my do I make my attentions before I offer the salat. Innovation. Well, with Jahim. Like I said, the gold is coming in. is a different form of innovator and innovation. Different ball game. But as I knew better, I did better. But do I is honorable. Hold our hands up to Allah is honorable. It's the thing I did when the prophet when the prophet said, Allah is shy. Allah is shy when his average holds his hands up. He is shy not to give him anything, so he gives him what he so there's nothing wrong with this. But let's do it together after every salat together. And everybody said, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, after every salat together. No, that's not present in this land. We'll be very, very careful of this Yahweh battle law. Very, very careful. And don't beat down other people that still do these things. Commit of them, they're doing innovation, but they're not innovators. This is the back door of the shirt, Yahweh battle law. We'll be very, very careful. The Prophet Sallallahu gave us the two sources. Call it Allah, call it Rasul. But Allah said what he said, did and approved of. To stay away from these things. Stay away from fickle matters. Stay away from it. Stay away from things that make you doubt. Stay away from it. If it's unheard from it, stay away from it. No matter how good it is, no matter how much the dialogue we might have here at Master Falao, it's only a few people coming, and you can have another, you can have another community in another part of the country, they bring a thousand people in. But if innovation is involved in the way they call these people in, they get no barakah. Huh? It's misguidance. And then every misguidance of what? The lie like on the street, and every going the street is what? In the hell I do. Let's be very, very cautious of this. Let's always ask ourselves, why do I do what I do? Why am I holding my hands like this? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Why do we do what we do? Have we become a blind follower? Or somebody that we highly respect? And the person that you highly respect, they might be a blind follower of a blind follower of a blind follower. And the Isnad or the Sinai does not go back to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi You'll be very, very careful, gay brother. This is the beware of the back door to shirt, which is innovation. Because it sounds good. Because it looks good. Because it smells good. Alhamdulillah, he brought in Ayyamin. Allahumma salli ayyam Muhammadin wa ayyam ayyam Muhammadin. Kama salata ayyam Ibrahim wa ayyam ayyam Ibrahim. Enna ka hamida matik. Allahumma brought ayyam Muhammadin wa ayyam Muhammadin. كما بروحت عائلة إبراهيم وعائلة عائلة إبراهيم إلا ما حمد عم أجيب قامة الصلاة
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته